Hi guys, it's Ray. Um, today I need to work on two whiskey barrel tumblers. So, um, my cups are base painted white. I grabbed ginger, teakwood, and butterscotch this time. I never do these exactly the same twice, just whatever colors I grab first. Um, I like to use a chippy brush. This is a one inch brush. Um, I've used it before. It is going to pick up some of the other color off the brush as I go, which is perfectly fine. But I just run a line. Protect your surface, protect your hands from the ink because you are going to be splattering ink when you do this. And just start running lines everywhere. Go back and forth until it's dry. And I don't worry about white spots to start because I will go in and fill those with the other colors and that'll build and overlap some color. I get my 25 ounce barrel tumblers from Makerflow Crafts. There's a link down in the description. I will put a link to a um, variety of brown alcohol inks down there as well. Sometimes your brown inks will take on a little bit of a green tinge. Um, especially the espresso, but it usually will come back to brown. So don't panic and freak out if that happens. I do not seal my inks before epoxy. Some people do. I feel sealing them, you are more likely to mess them up because if you use the wrong sealer, it will loosen them all up. So if you really want to seal them, I highly, highly recommend that you use the Kmar varnish first and then your regular sealer. That's just my preferred method. Everybody has to kind of experiment and figure out what works best for themselves when it comes to inks. And I'm going to get the bottom. This is one of those that's difficult to do sideways for the camera deals. Try not to let it roll over the edge too much. When you have these little rollers like that, like this one here, hopefully you can see that. Um, when you put more ink on it, it'll loosen that up and it'll disappear. The alcohol inks reactivate themselves. So, Alright, so that is good enough for that layer on that one. Oops. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the second one. I know they look a hot mess to start. You can use other types of brushes. I've just, I've experimented with all of the types of brushing and the chippy brush just works best for me. So that is what I go with. And if you start stopping like halfway down like that, that's when you start building your texture and shaping your wood. Be 
because you don't want it like just perfect straight down the line like chunks because wood isn't perfect like that. You want some with lines that are going to stop from the bottom and some that stop at the top. I don't worry too much about putting like actual knots in, but if you want to do an actual knot, you just kind of drop some on and build it up in a circle. You can go with a smaller brush for this, but and you can just keep layering with a smaller amount inside. Just to give it a different texture. So, I'm not gonna switch brushes, I'm just gonna switch color. I'm gonna go to Ginger next. I just keep rolling right with the same brush. I use the same chippy brush over and over and over and over again for these cups. And you can just keep building with one color. I like to give it a variety of colors. Like I said, I typically use two to three. If you're going with just two colors, you're going to want to fill in all of your white completely on color two. If you're going with a third, it's okay to still leave a little bit of white because you can get that complete full coverage on color number three. So. So I'm going to call that good with this color. And I did not do the bottom of this one with my other color, so I will pick that up on this color. I just really like getting more depth and dimension by using multiple colors. wood grains you could literally work this all day and come back tomorrow and decide you hate it and just keep adding ink so I'm gonna go ahead and do the bottom which that just ran over the side I'm sure of it If you have where you know a big run happened, try and get that sooner rather than later. But again, you can come back in and hit it and it's going to be fine. You just want to be careful if you had a spot you really liked that you didn't want to mess up. Okay. So you can see where I splattered a little bit on here.
So I'm going to work out the worst of the little splatter spots. All right, and I'm going to come in with the butterscotch, which is my lightest color. And just fill in any white and finish it off. And that was two big spots. Hopefully you can see how that kind of reactivates the other colors. I'm coming back in there because I didn't like how that left it a little circly looking. Not what I was going for. A little bit of white in here. But you just want to make sure you don't have any, 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 any white at all coming through. spot here and you can come back in with your third color if you want if there's spots you wanted to darken back up I'm gonna double check my bottom for any white and just to get some dimension in there and to make sure there were no big drippy spots coming off the bottom so that's cup number one I'm gonna set it aside to dry I am setting it in my drying rack so it stays face up just to dry. And I do have a spot where that ran, or the next layer down ran, so I want to make sure I get that run spot worked over good. Again, just the same thing on repeat. So, I'm not seeing any white anymore. So I'm going to set this one aside to dry and I will come back and get a coat of resin on them in a little bit when these have had time to fully. Okay, so I am ready to get a coat of resin on these. Let me get them turned on. This is my noisiest turner, sorry. But it's just going to get a clear coat of KS Resin Liquid Stone for now. So nothing fancy, just a good coat. all they're getting. I love how no two of these will ever come out exactly the same. They're always unique. So 
So that's one. Get this one coated. And after these are dry, I will get the decals on. the next step so um, these will dry overnight at least because it is the liquid stone it does take longer to dry so I will be back for that step okay so I am getting the decals on these Trying to make sure they're glitter free. It's so hard to keep them glitter free, but um, I already went ahead and decaled one. So that's how that looks. I have my decals prepped over here. Um, these are a little bit more difficult to decal just because of the curve. I don't know why it does not want to pick up my eye. There. So, I like to, and no two ever end up with the exact same placement. Just the nature of these. But I like to put this in the center first. And I try and keep the bottom part lifted. And I work the edges out. And get those down. And then I work from the center out at the top. And I feel like I may be crooked just because of the way I'm working. So I'm going to kind of look at this. <clears throat> don't normally lift it right off like that but and then I work the bottom section out from the center so that's my main decal I just have strips of black vinyl cut and strips of whatever metallic vinyl I have handy. I think this one was copper. Could have been a gold for the heads. So I just take a piece of black vinyl, start on the back side. just wrap trying to keep it somewhat straight you can trim your ends to evenly line up if you want or you can let them overlap whatever you're more comfortable with for these I don't typically worry about it too much And just grab your next one and leave a little bit of space in between the two and just kind of follow the first one's lead. Give it a wrap. And 
감자. Meet up in the back. To the left. It's going to be the same process at the bottom. Just pick a spot to start. Wrap it. To me, this part is where it truly becomes that barrel look that you're going for. You can use whatever decal you want in the center. And this one I am going to trim because the bottom is always a little bit long. I go way towards the bottom. So, do your second one. Same as the top, just chase the first one with a little bit of a gap. And again, I'm going to trim it. All right, so take your little dots. Hopefully I have enough cut. I like to put them, my first set, kind of where they overlap. And then I like to do a little bit off center. And I'm going to be short on these. So I'll have to come back. And I have some more cuts. Oh, yeah, no, I'm going to be too short. May have some more. I think they might be slightly wonky, the other ones. That's why I ran short. But let me go look. I had my vinyl uneven, so I cut them. The tiniest bit off the edge, but these two really aren't actually that bad. So I'm just going to go ahead and use them. There. Now they are ready for a coat or two of epoxy, and then they will be done. But I'm not going to show you just putting the clear coat on because literally these just get a clear coat at this point. They are finished at that point. But that is how I like to do my whiskey barrels. I love how um, no two are ever the same. They will all have their own unique character to them, just like an actual barrel would. So, um, that is it for those. Thank you for watching.